This video will show how to solve series parallel combination circuits for electronics. The easiest way to do this, I found, is if you follow these simple steps. First, draw the current path through the circuit to identify what components are in series and what components are in parallel. Drawing the current path helps you to identify this. Second, if you color code the wires to identify voltage drops that occur throughout the circuit, that will help you to keep track of which resistors have the same voltage drops. Third, I use a technique called redraws to combine parallel and series components. And then fourth step is to calculate parallel resistances and then series resistances. Fifth, you identify what you need to find, then identify what you need to know in order to find it. And sixth, you'll use Ohm's law repeatedly to find unknown values. Just Ohm's law over and over again. And then seventh, remember that parallel voltage drops are the same and series currents are the same. So here's an example circuit. Any electronic circuit, no matter how complicated, can be simplified down to sets of series and parallel components. Now I've shown all resistors, but any electronic component can act like a resistor. Uh, for example, a, a speaker, a motor, a light, any of those components can act like a resistance. So we'll just symbolize them with resistances here. Now step one would be to draw the current path through this circuit. So I'm going to use a green highlighter and highlight this current path through the circuit. Now notice as I first come down from the voltage source uh, and get to this point the current splits. Some of it going to the right, some of it going to the left, and some of it going through the center. So as you follow these currents through these resistors, you can see that these resistors would be in parallel as the current divides up and then at the end comes back and recombines at this point to go through resistor 4. After getting through resistor 4, the current again splits, some to the left and some to the right. That identifies for us that R6 and R7 are in series as the same current goes through each of them. Then the current goes through R5 on the left, R6 and 7 on the right, comes back together at this point where it all goes to ground. So drawing the current path helped me to identify that R1, R2, and R3 are parallel, R6 and R7 are in series, and R6 and 7 together are in parallel with R5. The next technique is to use color coding of the wires to identify voltage drops. I use a red voltage to indicate the highest level of voltage and that would be from the voltage source. So this wire is red and anything connected to that wire is going to have the same voltage. So these wires being red indicate the highest voltage level. Voltage again is like pressure so it takes some pressure or some voltage to push the current through those resistances, through those resistors. So on the opposite side of the resistors there there will be a drop in the pressure along those resistors. So on the opposite side there will be a lower voltage. And we'll indicate that with this purplish color. And it's going to stay that voltage level until it hits the next resistor, R4. And then again voltage level drops as it pushes current through that resistor. We'll use a light green color to indicate this voltage level. The lowest voltage level possible would be at the ground voltage level. I'll indicate that with a dark blue color. So if you notice R5 drops whatever voltage is remaining to get all the way to zero. So it starts at uh, red with 9 volts, drops some voltage to go to purple, drops more voltage to go to green, drops all the rest of the voltage and ends at zero at, at blue. But R6 can't drop all the rest of the voltage or there would be none left to push through R7. So I'm going to draw a different color separating in between R6 and R7. Perhaps a light blue to indicate that there's still some voltage that uh, needs to drop across R7. Okay, so next step would be to do a series of redraws of the circuit, combining resistors that we can combine. So this is what I've labeled on this slide the original circuit, so you can look at that and refer to that, and the first redraw. And notice in the redraw that I've combined R1, R2, and R3 in parallel. And I use this notation of these uh, slash marks to indicate in parallel. Then also notice R6 and R7 have been combined and they're in series and I use a plus sign to indicate that things are in series. So I've, I've drawn both on this redraw. Now the thing to do on this redraw step is to calculate what those resistance values would be for those combinations of resistors. So for calculating resistance in parallel, the formula is 1 over 
1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus however many resistors you have. To do our calculation for our example, the numbers would be 1 over 1 over 560 plus 1 over 890 plus 1 over 1200. Now on the original circuit it shows 1.2 K ohms or 1.2 kilo ohms. Remember 1.2 K ohms is the same as 1200 ohms. Now on my calculator, I happen to use a TI-84 Plus. What I use is uh, the X to the minus 1 button, or the 1 over X button. If you look on your calculator and you have a 1 over X button or an X to the minus 1, what that means is it, it takes a value and takes its reciprocal. Uh, so I enter it into my calculator as follows. 560 X to the minus 1 plus 890 X to the minus 1 plus 1200 and then X to the minus 1 and then if I hit enter that gives me the value of the denominator of this fraction but then if I take that answer if I just hit on my calculator if I just hit X to the minus 1 the display indicates it's taking that answer and taking the inverse of that or the reciprocal of that so I get answer for the total resistance which in this case is 267.19 ohms Depending on the accuracy of your initial uh, values to put into the equation, your answer can't be more precise or more accurate than your, your inputs. So I should probably round this to the nearest ohm. But I'm going to leave this value as it is for now. And if I use this value to calculate any additional values, then I won't have compounded rounding errors. If I round it too soon and then use that rounded value to calculate more values each time I round it compounds the the rounding errors so I'll leave this a, as it is for now and then my final answer I can round it as I want for resistor 1 2 and 3 in parallel equals 267.1908506 ohms my calculator shows that long decimal answer but I'm really only going to round to probably three decimal places and then at the very end I'll round to the nearest ohm and also I'm going to show all four of my redraws here so I've already calculated resistor 1 in parallel with resistor 2 in parallel with resistor 3. And that's 267.191 ohms. Using redraws helps me to keep organized because I realize, okay, right away the next thing that I can see is resistor 1 and resistor 4 are in series. So I can just add those together in my next redraw. And since resistor 4 is just another 100 ohms, I can add that. So 367.191 ohms. Now I need to solve for resistor 6 and 7 that's in series with each other. That's a 500 and 200 ohm resistor, so that's 700 ohms. Recognize next I have another parallel combination of resistor 5 in parallel with resistor 6 and 7. So that's 730 and 700 ohms. So I'll type 700 x to the minus 1 plus 730 x to the minus 1, hit enter. That gives me actually the conductance through those resistors, but I want the resistance, which is the reciprocal, so I'll take x to the minus 1 again, which says answer to the negative 1, or take the reciprocal of my answer, and hit enter, and it shows me that the parallel resistance of that combination is 357.343 if I round it. So now the, the two resistors from redraw 2 are in series, so I can just add those together, which is 724.533 ohms. Now that I know my resistances, I can use Ohm's Law to calculate currents and voltage drops. So I'll begin with the redraw number 3, I know the total voltage and I know my total resistance now so I can calculate total current. So that's 9 volts divided by 724.533 ohms and it gives me 12.423 milliamps. I like using color coding to keep things straight so I don't confuse things. So I'll write currents in green. Now this total current I can look through my redraws and see anywhere in the circuit where I have all the current flowing through a single resistor, it's going to be that same 12.423 milliamps. So right here, resistor 4 is a resistor where all the current is flowing through one resistor. I can see that in my original circuit and then in this redraw number 1. I can also imagine this 12.423 milliamps of current flowing through the circuit in redraw number 2 
that would give me the current and the resistances so I could calculate voltage drops using Ohm's law. So I can take 12.423 milliamps times 367.191 ohms and get my voltage drop. I'll write these voltage drops in red. So 4.562 volts for the top resistance and 4.439 volts for the bottom resistance. What I can see from my redraws is that this 4.439 volts is actually a parallel combination. So it should be there as well as there. And the top one is divided between that 100 ohm resistance of R4 and the rest of this parallel combination here. Now if I look at the bottom parallel, R5 and parallel with R6 and 7, I can see that R5 has to have a voltage drop of 4.439 volts. So I can just write that in on my original circuit. But the R6 and R7, the voltage drop there has to, that 4.439 volts has to be divided between those two. But the voltage drop for R4 can be calculated using Ohm's law and redraw number one from the current times that resistance. 100 ohms times 12.423 milliamps, I get a voltage drop of 1.242 volts. And so that, I can see, goes also in my original circuit drawing. Since I know from redraw number two that first voltage drop of 4.562 volts gets divided between the parallel combination and then resistor four, since I know the voltage drop of R4, I can subtract that from the 4.562 volts to get my voltage drop for that parallel combination. Turns out that's 3.320 volts. So I know each of these resistors, 1, 2, and 3, because they're in parallel, have to have that same 3.320 volt voltage drop. If I go back to R6 plus R7 and redraw 1, that together is a 700 ohms, and I know the voltage drop is 4.439 volts, so I can use Ohm's law to calculate that current which is 6.341 milliamps. So then I know the same 6.341 milliamps is going through R6 and also through R7. And now I have, for both R6 and also for R7, two of the three unknowns to be able to use Ohm's law so I can calculate my voltage drop by doing current times resistance. So for R6, that's 3.171 volts. And for R7, that's 1.268 volts. Now for R1, R2, and R3, I can use Ohm's law as well to calculate the currents through each of those resistors. And also for R5. So now I know all three parameters for every resistor in this original circuit. So here's my final table with all the values that I needed and rounded to the nearest ohm, the nearest tenth of a milliamp, and the nearest uh, tenth of a volt as well. So I hope that's helped you to learn how to solve series parallel combination circuits. At first they can seem very intimidating, but if you can follow these steps, you can simplify any complicated series parallel combination circuit and solve it. So I hope you learned a lot from this video and best wishes to you.